You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again to commence our broadcast week here on the old OIRN with the show known far and wide, legendary around the globe as The Option Block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com. Thank you, everyone who took the time out there to listen to our content. There were a lot of you last month. We love you all. Of course, if you like what you hear, do keep rating and reviewing wherever you get this show. It's available pretty much everywhere under the sun. So if you're on a platform that allows you to review it, then by all means, we appreciate it if you do. If you're not, let's say you're on a platform that doesn't have a rating system, you can always go to where our app is found in many of the major app stores, you know, iOS, Android, all that fun stuff. A lot of people like to leave ratings there. And then, of course, you want to go above and beyond. You want to join us for great pro Q&A sessions. We had the once in future Dr. Vix, and we had the flow master in the hot seat very recently. Got Mr. John Smolin coming back in uh, from MyAx, a longtime market maker and risk manager over there at SIBO for a long time. A lot of, a lot of wisdom to share joining us in the hot seat this week. If you want to be part of all that fun as well as get, of course, the great options oddities at the end of the week, you want to get, let's get your name in the hat <laughs> for the pro trading crate. Just sent one out recently to our most recent winner, as well as, of course, live access to this, access to the pro podcast feed for all the great back episodes you may have missed and a whole bunch more. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more about that very fun, ever-evolving, ever-exciting experience over there on the pro side. You're missing the fun. Come join us. It's pretty fun. Welcome to all the folks who joined in the last couple of weeks. I know it's been a bunch of you. Let's get on out now. To kick things off in fun style, I did a little quick math before the show. And interestingly enough, we've been doing this for a while. But of course, when we upped the stakes in the wrestling guessing game, listeners, we added a fun and awesome, a fabulous, a one off. Maybe not one off because there's more than one. I have one coming, (laughs) but not many were available of this. Very cool. They took the old school 80s style G.I. Joe version of Sergeant Slaughter and scaled it up to six inch. Added some bunch of cool accessories, made it like cool, you know, SDCC exclusive this year. We ended up getting a couple of them, and we're going to give one of them to one of these crazy two here if they could win. So ever since we've been battling for that, I went through and did the math quickly, and we are tied seven points apiece for each of these crazy two here, which is last week's point for Sebastian. You can maybe argue it. It was kind of light. Neither of them has gotten a single point since we started doing this medley format. I kind of, to be nice, gave a kind of half point to Sebastian, which worked out to be a full point. So effectively, it tied up the game at 7-7. But I want one of these guys to freaking get one of these medley things correct. At least name one of them. That's all I'm looking for now. So we're going to go same thing again. Medley time again. Three 
selections. Can you name at least one of them? Whoever names the most gets the point, obviously. I'll give you a hint this time to make it even easier for you two. I do believe there's two tag teams in this one. So you're going to guess two tag teams and then one solo wrestler. All right. There we go. Can you name hopefully at least one of these wrestlers in this next 80s wrestling medley? There we go. There's your three. Just a reminder, two tag teams and one solo wrestler. I'll open it up now. Whoever wants to buzz in can go. I'll buzz. All right. You're right. The greasiest of meatballs. Mr. Right. Mark, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com, beaming to us from the Southern Volatility Mecca known as Austin. Also, the home of next year's RMC conference. Coincidence? I think not. Uh, Mr. Meatball, sir. Tell me you can get at least you got to be able to get at least one of those. I think I got the fir- I think the first one is almost certainly the Bushwhackers. I think it's the Bushwhackers. That's your guess. OK, uh, I will say and I will neither confirm nor deny. All right. The second one, I think, is. Uh, that's another tag team. Uh, it almost sounded like the Rockers, but I, I'll just say the Rockers and then. The third one, I did not know. I'm guessing that's a heel, but that sounded like heel music. So I'm going to say that is, oh, let's see. Uh, I'll say Greg the Hammer Valentine. Greg the Hammer Valentine. All right. Now, interesting. Those are your choices. I will neither confirm nor deny. And I will just say, Mr. Uncle Mike, you are allowed to guess as well. However, if you guess the same ones and it turns out, that one of those is right, then Mr. Meatball will get the point because he guessed it first. I'm just saying that to you. So just put it out there. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what do you got? Uh, you're going to believe it or not. Literally, as I was writing these down, the first two, I, my guesses were the same as Sebastian's. So. You got to buzz in sooner then. You got to get I tried to force you to go first a couple of weeks ago and you fought me on it. So this is this is only down to you, sir. I know. I know. All right. So. I'm going to go with a couple other. So I'm just going to guess other ones. I'll go with. um, So we got two tag teams. I'm going to say for the first one, my first choice would be the Bushwhackers, but I'm going to go with something different on here. So I'll go with. I'm going to go with the Islanders. Rare known tag team by Bobby Heenan. Mm, Wow. Deep cut. The the second one, I'm going to go with. I will go with, for the second one, I'm going to go with Ken Patera. Ooh. And then wow, the even deeper, one, if that's possible. <laughs> and for the third one, I'm going to go with, I'll go with, oh, no, I can't do that. I'll go with, um, man, because I really did like the first two, but I, I snoozed, I lose. So even though I know there's two tag teams, I'm going to go take go out on a limb here and just try and hedge myself a little bit because uh, I think it could be an individual one. I will go with in this case. Let me think of a really good deep one here. I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna go with Paul Orndorff. Oh, this Ooh. is like second time you've guessed. I think Sebastian guessed Paul Orndorff recently too. You guys, I love a Paul Orndorff on this medley. <laughs> he is the original Mister Wonderful. The guy in Shark Tank stole his name. From him. Uh, so yes, Mister Mister Meatball, you got two out of the three. The Bushwhackers were for. I figured you, one of you guys would get that one at least. The Bushwhacker is kind of an iconic theme. Everyone knows that one. Very silly. And then second one was the Rockers. You were right. So we got two for two there. So, Mr. Me- Mr. Uncle Mike, you had those two. You-, you let them slip away. And then the third one was actually Superfly Jimmy Snooker. Oh. 
So there we go. Interesting. That was your three. So Mr. Meatball actually. I don't know why it, I didn't recognize it because the Superfly Jimmy Snook always start out with Superfly. Super exactly. Super. Took that out of this one. And made it a little trickier. When you, when you don't hear that part, you don't recognize <laughs> it. It throws you off. When they don't say exactly yeah. who the wrestler is. Yes, it is exactly. more challenging. <laughs> All right. So there you go. People actually getting some right this week, too, for the Meatball. So that puts him in the lead. In the lead for Mr. Meatball here. Eight to seven. Can Uncle Mike tie before the end of the year? We shall find out as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everyone. Welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show we break down what the heck is trading out there. And it seems like the market's are pretty firmly into the green. They've been hanging out there pretty much all session. We started off a little bit choppy, then pretty much ever since then it's been pretty much straight up. A little bit of a, a little bit of a downturn in the last few minutes, but outside of that, we're still up close to twenty handles, right around half a percent for the S and P. Hanging out close to guess what, listeners, right around thirty nine half again. It seems to be we we really love that level in the S and P. We just love to kiss it and hang out there as long as we possibly can. Uh, so we're green today, but not a ton. It's green, but nothing blowing the doors off today. Uh, surprisingly enough, since our last show, we have seen a little bit of interesting evolution out there on the Vol front. Getting the weekend back and then some out there. <laughs> VIX Cash, about 24 and a half when we kicked off the show. That's up nearly two points, about 1.8 points from where it was on Thursday's show. VVIX, so the Vol of Vol, was hanging out at a nice, steady, even keel 85 for much of last week has now ticked up about four points to 89. VXX at about a 15.20. That puts it pretty much unched from where it was on Thursday's show. Uh, UVXY and UVIX, they're both racing each other to zero. Uh, It's hanging out unched right now at about a 7.70. So I have not seen any news about a reverse split, but maybe the meatball has seen something. We shall see. SVIX, 13.80. That's down a whopping tenth of a point from where it was this time on Thursday's show. Uh, Mr. Mr. Once and Future Dr. Vix coming out in support of you, Vix. He likes it. He's a fan of it out there. So I'm intrigued. Not trading the options. Seems like no one is, but he does like the underlying. Are you on board with us, Vix listeners? Uh, I'm curious. It seems like a very divisive product still for obvious reasons. You, Vix, 690 right now when we kicked off the show. Also unched. Also poised. Ready to make its move to zero if allowed. And then Vol Q coming into the show was at about, oh, looks like about a 2860 or so. That puts it up. About one point from where it was on Thursday. Sure. All right, the table is set. We will go now to our winner of the week, the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian. Mr. Meatball, sir, A, people want to know if you heard any news about uh, the reverse split. Ten for one, hopefully, out there in UVXY land. And what else is lighting up your tape out there today, sir? You know, I, I've not heard anything about reverse splits yet. Um, what I will tell you is it's kind of a, a weird one, right? We've got um, ahead of the CPI on Tuesday morning. Uh, VIX is up big, a little bit of weak in effect, but really just options are up. But VIX futures are simultaneously down, which is telling you that the market is perceiving uh, tomorrow's move as quite binary. And we could be looking at a pretty strong move up or down to put things in perspective. The straddle for Tuesday is $90. Uh, the straddle for next Friday is 120. That shows you just how much for Friday expiration, which is quadruple witching, uh, just kind of shows you how much they're actually looking for a potential movement as we head into um, CPI tomorrow on, on Tuesday. Uh, other things that I'm seeing is uh, general strength in energy today. Huge move higher in that gas. The uh, the dollar is stronger, which is not necessarily great if you, uh, if you think the market's going to hold up. doesn't really feel like they will. Uh, but you have um, just a massive move in that gas, many of the NAT gas players uh, popping off today. Uh, pretty decent moves kind of across the board in that space, energy as a whole. But NAT gas in particular seems to be the piece that's outperforming in the energy space. Uh, for uh, Apple, basically flat, and uh, some of the the materials are down today, which is is interesting. Um, so that's kind of what we're seeing, kind of across the board, across the spectrum. We've got some some 
interesting kind of squeezy names in Carvana, which, you know, people aren't sure whether it's going to be around or not uh, in the next few days and weeks. Uh, had a huge short squeeze last week. That squeeze appears to be, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how whether, you know, it's coming off today, but whether that squeeze can roll into other names uh, or whether Carvana's squeeze was a one off. The current borrow on Carvana is uh, pretty, pretty decent sized. Um, and that is just something to be aware of. The debt is trading at huge premiums. And then Mike's favorite crypto. Uh, we continue to see crypto struggle stuck in a range. Uh, we had that. Did, did, did you talk about that Beto iron condor on option oddities, Mark? We did not. Oh, last week, uh, a trader sold a one point iron condor in Bitcoin, B I T O the ETF, signaling that Bitcoin is going nowhere for a while. Uh, and that's the way it kind of feels as a market. But keep it on the dollar. Keep an eye on those rates. The bond market is, again, I think, primed for tomorrow. Bonds are up. So it could be, like I, I think, a very interesting couple of days. Non-farm, or we've got CPI, the Fed, and quadruple witching all in a four-day span. So should be an exciting week. Indeed. I love some Bitto action out there. It has been very active. It's averaging somewhere around. 120,000 contracts a day these days. So folks liking themselves some Biddo, including Uncle Mike. He never met a Biddo trade he didn't like. Mr. Uncle Mike, in addition to all the Biddo you've been putting up out there of late, what else has been catching your eye out there, sir? Very interesting. Well, I mean, it's something to where um, I, I keep wondering about my business venture of my domain name, BitcoinReallySucks.com, because if it goes belly up, I mean, I don't know if it, it's kind of like it just make it to be so worthless that um, there won't be enough anger towards it. So I almost need it to have a run up and then flush more people out of it because then there'll be a lot of anger with it. And then I might get some traction on it and be able to sell it for a higher price. So, I mean, I, I don't know what to even think with Bitcoin right now. It's just uh, it is what it is. But anyway, just some things that I'm noticing in the market. I think that uh, the, the Fed's the big thing this week. Uh, we do have a lot of the other things that Mark talked about, but whatever the Fed says is what's going to be the big news of the week, I think. Um, we have a lot going on, but I, I think the Fed just trumps all. Uh, we're in a situation to where if uh, the Fed says something the market's like, then both stocks and bonds will rally. We'll continue to be in bizarro world uh, to where they go the same way like they have been for 2022. Uh, and that's where we're going to be with it. Uh, in terms of some other things, uh, markets are up a little bit today, but very insignificant on the grand scheme of things. Uh, Nat gas is getting a nice little rally today, as Mark alluded to. Uh, oil's uh, up not too much for oil. I mean, it is up $2. Uh, so it is in the 73 range. So it's not up too much, but uh, it's definitely up to say the least. And just with the market going up today, uh, one of the things that is um, probably uh, really catching my eye the most, uh, yes, we do have oil going up. We have energy going up, but we're getting a little bit of a bid in technology. Now, the interesting thing about technology uh, to me is that right now, if you've been out of the market for the, for a year or two or whatever, and you are looking to get back in, uh, technology and the bigger names have gotten the tar beat out of them this year in terms of, uh, Google, Amazon, uh, Apple to some extent. But if you are looking to get back into the market right now and you're comfortable holding those companies for the long term, selling some puts on those companies or even just buying them outright. If you're comfortable with the volatility over the next couple of years, because it will be there, it might not be a bad idea to start taking a look and taking some nibbles at it right now. I know that this has not been a pleasant year for people, uh, but if you are a long-term bull, uh, this could be an opportunity for you. So that's what I'm seeing today. All right, let's see what everybody else is seeing out there. Let's start in the major indices, see how much paper is going up out there today. By the way, speaking of paper, I do love when we have the flow master on the show here because he always leaves with goodies. When he came in, he added a China tab for us so we could easily find everything going on in China. And then I joked with him. I said, hey, we should also add a, a zero DTE SPX uh, section little button. And sure enough, 
coming in today. There it is, a, a zero DTE SPX button just for us to use to find out all the action that's going on out there in those ridiculously popular zero data. When we last Thursday was 36, I believe, out of the 40 most active SPX contracts were all expiring that day. I mean, that's just insanity. Talk about a sea change in one of the biggest products on the planet. It's just it's just madness out there, listeners. Uh, but let's keep on rolling. Let's get on out to uh, the indexes first, listeners. A little bit of paper out there on the tape today, which is always nice to see, given the fact that we have been pretty much moving in one direction, mostly up. That usually doesn't translate into a ton of, let's say, VIX paper. But we're seeing some paper out there today. 373,000 contracts on the tape. That looks even better when you see that the ADV has continued to erode. It is down to 527,000 contracts out there right now, listeners. So pretty light days out there in the VIX. But then again, it is coming into the well, almost, Jesus, this year is just flying by. We're almost at the second half of December in a couple of days, listeners. We know the later half of December, not exactly boom times for volume, especially from a vol perspective. So we probably will see VIX continue to erode a little bit. And today, though, bucking that trend, 373,000 contracts on the tape. SPY also looking pretty robust. 3.9 million contracts right now. The ADV, a little bit shy of eight, about 7.8 million contracts. Uh, the S, one and a quarter million contracts. The ADV, 2.56 million contracts. Let's look, use our fancy new zero DTE button here. See what's going on out there. In oh, <laughs> I see what I was like. Wait a minute, this is not that. I see what he did. He made us the opposite. He made us a non-zero DTE. So I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> thirty-eight hundred puts expiring monthly. That's not zero DTE. So yes, he made us the opposite, which actually, ironically enough, is almost harder to find out there in SPX. You have to really look to see how many names are not expiring. To I just pulled it up right now, listeners. Of the top twenty most active contracts in SPX right now, the top nineteen. You have to go all the way down to number 20 to find a contract that is not expiring today. My goodness, how things have changed. If you do a top 40, it gets a little bit different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you add a top 40, about 10. So it's about 30 of the top 40 listeners are still expiring today, man. SPX, a very different beast now than it even was a couple of months ago. Hence, these numbers are still looking pretty good. It used to be really hard for the S to be north of a quarter, or should say north of a million by now. Now, if it's not at one and a quarter or one and a half by this time of day, you might say things are light. So things have very much changed out there. Things are light in small caps land, though. 387,000 contracts on the tape. Doesn't look as bad, though, when you see that the ADV has shrunk down to 732K. And the Qs, 1.2 million. Uh, the ADV, 2.66 million contracts. Let's go out to most actives. And you know what? It is not exactly a rock'em sock'em day out there today, listeners, on the single names. Number 10, we're going back out to China. We're going to Baba, the name that is the bellwether for China for a lot of traders here in the U.S. these days. 140,000 contracts on the tape. Alibaba off about two and a third, trading exactly $89 right now. Uh, Still well north of their 52-week low, which was $58 that they hit back in October. So they've rallied nicely, 31 handles from there. So they got a ways to go if they want to retest those lows. Uh, Number nine, going out to streaming again, and again, kind of a light number, 143,000 contracts to number nine. That gets us to Netflix. They are coming for the flicks today, off nearly 10 handles, nine and a quarter handles. Uh, Still another one that has a long way to go to make it back to its 52-week low, which came back in May of 162. You remember that news, listeners, where they just kind of announced it seemed like the end of online streaming for a while. They really got cut in in half back in that April-May time frame, and they have recovered quite a bit from there. They're not quite back to where they were, but they were at about 348 when they started that big sell-off going into their earnings, but they're at 310 right now, so... Nice little recovery, even they are giving up about 10 points or close to it today. Number nine, or I should say number eight, we're going out to the alphabets. You know it's a slow day when alphabet sneaks into our top 10. It's number eight, 148,000 alphabet off, 62 cents, 92 and a quarter. So hanging out at a similar price range to alphabet, I should say to Amazon. So maybe we need to revisit that poll out there, see which names you'd like to buy. Uh, number seven, Microsoft. 
Justice Department dropping the hammer on them recently. But you know what? The stock seems to like it. <laughs> it's been up ever since. Now, there was a lot of rumor swirling for a while. So it's the old buy the rumor, sell the fact. Or in this case, sell the rumor because they were hitting it and then buy the facts. They got down to 242 off the rumors of this Justice Department was looking for them. And then when they actually announced it, the thing popped. Oh, a nice, uh, nice four or five handles out there. So, and it's been up pretty much ever since. So, Justice Department not liking the fact that they're going to become a monopoly out there in the video game sector. So, looks like that Activision deal may have to be restructured or it may not happen at all. Either way, Microsoft up today, up before 81 today, or nearly 2% trading a penny shy of 250 right now. So, interesting day for Microsoft. Uh, number six out to uh, the chip zone. It's NVIDIA listeners, 223,000 contracts, up a buck and a quarter, trading 171 and a quarter right now. So NVIDIA looking a little bit robust today. Right behind it, this old friend hanging out also in the chip zone, AMD, 268,000 contracts. AMD getting a bit of a lift today, up about exactly a buck, trading 69.60 right now. Also away from its 52-week low, which was about 54 and a half. Let's go out to number four out here, listeners. A little bit of a shakeup here. Good old Warner Brothers Discovery. This name hasn't been on our radar in a while. Did pop up earlier in the year when they had all that merger talk and all the the heat was coming for them. Then they had that kind of disastrous earnings call where they laid out some of their plans and people were not liking what the new CEOs of WBD were putting down. But apparently they're liking it today. Let's just look. Let's just look really quickly, see what is lighting it up out there today oh there's some size looks like the expiring on the 23rd d nine half puts and the 10 calls going up 140,000 times for the nine half puts the 10 calls going up 110,000 times so it looks like it's a it's like they were buying both very tight they had 1118 though <laughs> uh, that's uh that's an intriguing if you are do if it is a quote unquote strangle. You're you're doing it in a weird way, but that's what's driving all that paper out there today, listeners. Uh, two hundred seventy seven thousand contracts, two hundred fifty thousand going up in this funky spread. Then we've got uh, number three, the Amazonians. By the way, it looks like that might be closing. I have to go in and check and see. I do recall us talking about a funky trade in Warner Brothers. Maybe we'll have to go pay that off. Maybe we'll go see today. Uh, number three, we've got the Amazonians here. Uh, they are good for. 383,000 contracts. So again, we're at number three listeners, only at 383,000. That shows you how light of a day it is. 89 bucks, pretty much even for Amazon, off about a nickel today. Not a huge mover day for them. Number two, let's go to number two. It's the fruit company. Again, you know it's light listeners. When Apple's only done 485,000 contracts, it's up not even a quarter, 21 cents on the day, trading 142.32 right now. So not a huge day for Apple. And that means, number one, you know what it is, listeners. It's Tesla. It's the only thing even close to a million contracts today. 962,000 contracts on the tape for Tesla. Once again, they are coming for Tesla. A 169.80 where he's trading it now. Off nine and a quarter, a little over 5%. Uh, not that far away from his 52-week low, listeners. That was 166.18. They set that a few weeks ago back in mid-November. And now it looks like we are within spitting distance of that again. The low for the day, 169.39. Again, good for a 900 and 62,000 contracts out there, which is fascinating. As we keep on rolling, let's see what other kind of fascinating paper we can find, listeners. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. All right, everyone, welcome to the Odd Block, the portion of the show where we break down what is weird, what is wild, what is just completely whimsical that is lighting up our tape out there. I'm just trying to look really quickly to see if I could find. Ah, here it is. So it wasn't it wasn't on the Odd Block. It was on Options Oddities. But you know what? Let's cheat, listeners, give you guys a little bit of Options Oddities fun here on the old 
Odd block. Remember, I said that trade sounded familiar, listeners. What is going up out there today in Warner Brothers Discovery, ticker symbol WBD, listeners? And I said right now it's trading 1118, up about a dime on the year. Like I said, this has been an intriguing year for this. Of course, they had the whole uh, merger there with Discovery, a lot of heated debate about what they're doing with the actual content from outlets like DC and others shelving films that are completed or almost completed and a lot of interesting just discussions going on over there about what they what they view their key franchises to be they they think 90 day fiance is maybe in the same line as a Harry Potter or some of the DC things and a lot of interesting thoughts going on over there at WBD right now a year ago it was trading 25 and a half bucks and it got up to their high for the year of $26. Actually, I'm taking it back, $31.55. That was on April 13th. Then pretty much ever since then, it was straight down. It got down to 14 bucks on June 13th. And then it rallied up to 17 and a half bucks again on August 4th. Remember that August rally we had, listeners? Then it kind of trended right back down. Got to its nadir for the year. November 9th hit $9.52. And ever since then, it's been kind of trading north. But I mentioned the WBD lighting it up today. To the tune of that very funky, very sizable strangle slash risk reversal out there. It was 140,000 of the Deese nine half puts going up for eight cents against 110,000 of the Deese 10 calls for a buck and a quarter all going up this morning. And again, I thought that trade sounded familiar. So I went back to our massive, massive list of trades we're keeping an eye on here, not just for this show listeners, but also for options oddities. And this massive, we talked about it as a risk reversal back then. This was on what show was? This was all the way back on November 11th. We talked about this size risk reversal going up in Warner Brothers Discovery. It was the Deese expiring on the 23rd, nine and a half puts going up for 71 cents. It's like paper sold those against the 10 calls. They bought them again 110,000 times. So the size lines up exactly. And they did those for... About 70 cents. So you're selling the puts for 71 cents. You're buying the calls for about 70 cents. And again, looks like they took it off today. They bought the puts back for 8 cents and the calls back for a buck 24. So interesting, interesting stuff. It seems, it looked like at the time we weren't quite sure the execution was a little funky on the calls. It uh, looks like they went up today as, and again, these markets are terrible. So that's part of the, one of the reasons why this execution is wonky. But it looks like, Mr. Meatball, they kind of made money on this trade, selling put, buying call. It was very tight, too. It was nine half ten. 10. You don't see risk reversals normally this tight or this sizable. And yet we saw both in this. And it looks like they're taking it off today. And it seems like they made some cash. Is that your takeaway as well, sir? Uh, yes, it is. Did this one come across your big money flow today, sir? Uh, you know what, Mark? It did. Um, it was, uh, one second here. Uh, it did. And, you know, I, it, it was what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> it was, it was what it was out there. But yes, this one did ring a bell. I had to dig for it a little bit, but yes, we'll do a little bit of a, Options oddities pay off here on the odd block. I'll have to calculate exactly how much they made, listeners. But it looks like they're sitting pretty. So put up that kind of size. The stock ends up popping. You're you're betting for a pop. They weren't waiting too long, too. Those were December 23rd expirations. So they gave themselves a little over a month for that to happen. And it seems like they were on the right side of history there. Let's go on out to another name we talked about quite a bit recently. This is Glaxo Smith Klein, aka GSK PLC. That's what they're their cool new name is they're kind of trying to be like KFC, trying to sound all cool and hip with an acronym. So let's just call them GSK now. Uh, trading 35 and three quarters off about a quarter on the day. Uh, on the year, a year ago, we're trading about 44 bucks. Got up to their high for the year on January 18th of about 47.66 or so. And it looks like they flirted with that again in April, got up a little bit north of 47, hung out there for a while. Then they started selling off in July. They went from 43 bucks in July to their low for the year of 28 and a half bucks on September 26. And ever since then, they've been rallying again back up to they recently hit just about 38 bucks last week on December 6th. 
And now they're selling off the other side of it a little bit again, back down to 35 and three quarters, but still well off their 52 week low of 28 and a half bucks that came back in October. And it seems like someone once again is going back to the call well here on GSK listeners, scooping up some 38 calls in February, 14,000 of them to be precise. Uh, they paid a buck 25. Again, this market was kind of atrocious, 80 cents at a buck 50. So it shows you how illiquid some of these names are that we're talking about out here today. Uh, this stock was right about here, about a little bit higher, $36 when this trade went up. Uh, obviously, there's going to be earnings between now and Feb expiration. And those earnings are coming on February 1st. So they got some earnings baked into this one as well. Now, this is not the first time we talked about people swinging for the fences here in GSK. We talked about them recently on October 21st. Uh, also, I believe on options oddities, someone coming in and scooping 5,000 of the no 35s for 20 cents. The stock was 31 and a half bucks at the time. Uh, the stock ended going out at 32.89 on expiration. Didn't work out there, but that was a cheaper swing at the bat than a buck 25. <laughs> but they're also buying themselves a little bit more time. They only bought themselves a, about, a, about a month back then. Now they're going out to February. So Mr. Meatball, someone is continuing to tilt at that upside windmill. They're saying, you know what? We're going to make money to the upside in GSK. One of these days, if we just keep doing it long enough, this time they're going all the way out to the Feb 38s for a buck 25, sir. What say you? Uh, pretty darn fascinating. Uh, they are very bullish on this one. Uh, this, you know, on top of the one that went up, they were buying more of it. Uh, it looks pretty darn bullish. It's hard to argue that uh, this thing might not uh, might not be getting a, getting a pop. I have to imagine GSK has been on your money flow radar for a while now. They seem like they've been lighting up with a lot of call activity the last few months. Yep, it has been. This is one we've been in and out of a couple times and now looking at maybe potentially going long again. And why not? Why not in D? I should point out those ones we profiled in options oddities didn't work out. Well, we'll get to more of that in options oddities, but they did. They have traded more than just the 5,000 lot listeners that we talked about here. Those 5,000 lot not working out all right, but some of the others have done, have done all right. We'll see how these Feb calls, again, they're going a little bit farther out, paying a little bit more for these, so putting a little bit more on the line this time. We shall see how that works out. Let's go on out now to the other side of the coin. We're talking call upside. Now let's talk some puts. Let's go out to UBS Group AG, ticker symbol UBS. You guys know UBS. Uh, trading right now, $18.14. A year ago, wasn't that different. It was seventeen seventy seven. so up a whopping $0.37 cents on the year. In between, had a little bit more movement than that, obviously. Got up to $21.48. That was on February 10th. Uh, sold off hard after the invasion got down to Looks like 1512 before rallying again by April 4th to almost 20 bucks, 1996. So they had an interesting little V sell off and aggressive recovery there from February into April. Uh, then they sold off again in May down to 16 and a half bucks before rallying again to about 19 bucks on June 6th. Then they kept selling off for the better part of most of the rest of the year. They got down to their low for the year on October 12th of $13.80. And ever since then, uh, they've had a nice leg upward as well, shooting up from about 1380 all the way up to right around here. They got up to about 18 and a half bucks, and they've been kind of bouncing around in this 18 to 18 and a half range pretty much for the better part of the last month. They got up here around November 11th, and so they've been pretty much hanging out here for the better part of the last month. Uh, interesting. So let's see what's going on out here in UBS today. Someone thinks perhaps... This range that they're hanging out at, maybe uh, maybe they're poised to revisit some of those lows because they came in today. It looks like they scooped nearly 10,000, 9,997 to be precise, of the Feb 17 half puts. They paid a whopping 72 cents for these bad boys. That's about a 35 vol. The stock was right around here when they did this, so not a huge stock movement. There are going to be earnings between now and Feb expiration. The next announcement is on January 31st. So it looks like they're poised for a little bit of the old aggressive retracement. Again, it was at 1380 <laughs> not that long ago. It was at 1380 oh, back in October. So if it makes even half the move back to that, these puts are going to be looking all right. Uh, Mr. Meatball, sir, what are your thoughts? Flipping the script here, someone loading up on some puts in February, this time in UBS, sir. Uh, yeah, I saw these two, and, you know, there's been – Heavy paper in the uh, bearish paper in the European banks. 
Deutsche, Credit Suisse, and now UBS. So I don't know exactly what is going on here, but they are extremely worried about some of these European banks. Yeah, ever since uh, February kicked off in earnest, there has been a lot of concern about what's going on, their exposure uh, to credit over there, and a lot of other interesting issues have been weighing over a lot of these names that you just mentioned, Mr. Meatball, including UBS. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this. How much early in the year, listeners, back in you know the March, April time frame, how many size weekly put trades that we see going up in names like Deutsche Bank. People were coming in and fading the hell out of them, not even going out a month or two. They're going out the end of the week. So there was a lot of very near-term concern about a lot of these names. So get it out of here on this one, listeners. Let's go out to everyone's favorite name. This is Exalta Coding Systems Limited. Ticker symbol A-X-T-A, AXTA. They make coatings for a wide variety of industrial applications, including automotive paints. Well, there you go. That's, that spells it all. At least the automotive paints gives you a little bit more insight. <laughs> a wide variety of industrial applications doesn't tell you anything. Uh, a year ago, 3240 is where they were trading. So they're down almost seven bucks on the year, right around 20%. Uh, they got up to their high for the year, January 4th, 3412. And then they sold off hard by March 7th. They were trading 22 and a half bucks. So they came for it hard. They sold off over 10 bucks right around that whole invasion time frame. And then they rallied again. They got up to. 2811 on June 7th, then they fell off the cliff again. They got down to 22 bucks again on June 30th. Tried to rally it again. They got up to 26 and three quarters on September 12th before selling off again to their 52 week low of $20.66. That was on September 30th. And then since then, like our other name, it has been pretty much in rally ho mode, including a nice little pop over the last few months here, getting up to pretty much. About 26 and three quarters on November 11th. So, again, it's very similar time frame to our last trade. And then kind of hanging out in this 25 to 20, almost 27 range for the better part of the last month, bouncing around there. And we got someone who looks like they don't think they're going to bust too far out of this range over the next month and change because they came in and sold 5,565 of the Jan. 22 puts. Remember, I said that 52 week low, 2066. So that would indeed be below that. Uh, they sold them for 27 and a half cents. Again, just a crazy cakes market. Uh, looks like it was a dime at 50 cents. <laughs> ah, some of these markets uh, make me long for my market making days, let's just say. Uh, the stock was right here, 25 and a half bucks. And there are earnings in January. So, Mr. Meatball, kind of an atrocious market. They put them up kind of right in the middle. So I guess it's. I'll pick them as what you think they actually did. They could have potentially bought these for 27 and a half cents. That would be an interesting fill if that's the case. But what do you, what do you think is going on here in these AXTA Coding Systems Limited puts, sir? Yeah, you know, I'm not 100% certain. I don't really know a lot about AXTA. Um, but what I will say is that the there that's now like well through the offer. So my guess is they bought. Um, and you know, there's some other downside there. So my, my best guess is they bought, um, you know, they paid, they paid, they wanted to get the whole thing done. So they paid up, uh, that, that is kind of my best guess. Yeah. It looks like they're 25 bit at around 35 or so later on in the day. So yeah, interesting, interesting paper here and everyone's favorite Axta, or I should say Exalta coding systems ticker symbol axta as we keep on rolling it is monday listeners it is time for the strategy block it's time to dispense options wit wisdom and education it's time for the strategy block all right everybody time for uncle mike to dispense some options wit and or wisdom uncle mike the shift to the medleys has not exactly been working in your favor, sir. I think you're pretty much 0 for 3 on the weeks and 0 for 9 if you add up all the names we've thrown at you. <laughs> so it's been a, a challenging period for you on the wrestling front. Let's see if you can redeem yourself a little bit of the old strategy block, sir. Hey, times are tough, but hey, that's just the way it goes. So I'll I'll be back. I do my best, and it's all about the people. I'm a man of the people, so I will do my best with all this. So. Anyway, uh, in terms of the strategy block for today, 
Uh, like I was talking about in the beginning of the show a little bit in terms of getting into some stocks that you're willing to take on some volatility if you're willing to hold it. And so the last couple of weeks, we've talked a little bit about the tax harvesting and something that's just very important going into the end of the year. And if you're not thinking about this right now and you have non-qualified or I should say non-IRA money, um, you really need to take a look to see if there are any moves that make any sense for tax purposes before year end. Now, with that being said, let's talk about getting into the market. Uh, the way that we talk about a lot on the show is selling a put to get into the market. So let's say XYZ stock is at $53 a share. You can sell the 50 put. And if you have, of course, $50 per share in your account, then you're essentially getting paid to buy a stock that you want to buy at that price anyway. Wonderful concept. We've talked about it at least six trillion times on this show. Now, what I want to talk about is the downside or the disadvantage of actually doing that versus buying the stock. Did we just lose him? I need to bash this strategy. I love it. I'm there you go. We, 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 we lost you for two seconds, Uncle Mike, so uh, go back a little bit. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. I hear you fine. Okay. So from there, let's say that um, you want to own the stock and you want to own it at 50 in this example. By putting in a limit order, you're guaranteed to, oh, not guaranteed, but you're pretty darn close to guaranteed to getting to own the stock at 50 if it touches 50. If you sell a put, you might not get to own the stock. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say the stock goes down and it touches 50 and then it goes higher. Well, the put never gets assigned to you and the stock goes higher and let's make it a worst case scenario and let's make the stock go up to 80 during that time frame you're going to miss out on it. Now, you'll get paid for missing out on it, but you will miss out on it. So just have the understanding that no matter what strategy you do, in all of option trading, there's an advantage and a disadvantage to it. There's no one strategy that this is always the good strategy. It doesn't exist. Have an understanding of the good side and the bad side of any strategy with which there is. So if you're looking to sell a put to get into a stock, that's fine. Uh, once again, I can't even tell you how many puts I've sold to get into stocks. I love the strategy, but just have the understanding of what the downside of the strategy is. Of course, the stock itself, because if the stock goes to zero, you're going to go to zero right along with it uh, for selling that put, essentially. But you'll get paid to go to zero with it. Uh, you'll get paid whatever premium you took in for it. And then, of course, the other risk or the other downside to selling a put is if it touches your level but does not touch your level at expiration. You might miss out on getting to own that stock. So have that understanding going into it. And if you want to do it, happy put sales. Happy put sales indeed. As we keep on going, it is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for... Around the block. All right, everybody, let us go around the block, see what's on our radar for the rest of this week. Before we do that, really quickly, let's pay off some of our fun questions of the week. Last week, we asked you folks, what is your new favorite option product that you've added to your trading arsenal this year? Gave you three choices and the infamous other. We gave you Bitto options. We just talked about those earlier, as well as SPX, quote, daily options. And then, you know, the ones we've just been talking about a lot lately. And then, of course, a, a whole bunch of your Vol ETP friends added together, your SVIXs and your UVIXs and your SBKYs. Added them all together because they're similar flavors, and also none of them are doing a ton of volume, so you got to kind of add them together. And then we gave you the infamous other and... As I kind of expected, the SPX daily options ran away with it. I mean, you just look at the volume and you'll know pretty much exactly what's going on out there. 71% ended up choosing SPX daily options. 16.1% for Bitto, number two. Bitto ran away with it early, then it kind of just lost its steam. And then number three, we have the Vol ETPs out there, 9.7%. Only 3.2% of you saying other out there last week. Uh, fast forward to this week's question just went live. Right before showtime, we're asking you, hey, a very simple one this week. Which option strategy have you used the most in 2022? 
uh, gave you four choices. And of course, if you don't see your favorite, reply DM with your favorite, and we'll add all those in together as well. Gave you four general categories of trades. So your butterflies and your condors, your spreads with wings effectively, and then your long calls and your call spreads, your long puts and your put spreads, and then flipping the script, your short puts or put spreads and similar type trades. Uh, Mr. Meatball, we'll start with you. I know you're all over the SPX dailies now. If there's a strategy, though, that you've been utilizing the most this year, what is it? And then B, what do you think our audience is voting for? I've been using butterflies primarily. That's been the best method for me. Uh, I'm going to guess our audience is selling, is harvesting premium. Interesting. Interesting. Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you. If you have a strategy you found yourself using the most this year, I'd be curious to know what it is. And B, what do you think our audience is up to? I mean, this year, it's just something to wear. And in years like this, I try to keep a lot of powder dry. So I have been throwing in a few put spreads now and then. But uh, it's a, a white knuckle put spread, meaning I just got my hand on the on the close button the whole time. And uh, so I've been doing that. And uh, I think the audience has been harvesting premium as well. I'll agree with Mark on that. Interesting. Just a bunch of degenerate premium harvesters in our audience. That's what you folks think. Well, let's see what the answers are telling us. Again, this has been live. Not even an hour, listeners. So early, early times here. Get on over to at options on Twitter. If you don't see it up there at the top of our Twitter profile, listeners, just refresh to scroll down a little bit. We put out a lot of content throughout the day, obviously. But we try to retweet it and try to pin it up there so you folks can find it throughout the week. So if you're coming in later in the week, you can find it as well. Uh, right now, it's a tie, actually. <laughs> 27.3% each for butterflies and condors, long calls and call spreads, and short puts and put spreads. Interestingly, all three exactly tied. That's uh, that's weird. Again, early voting here, listeners. And then the long put coming in behind at 18.2%. So in a year where we've been mostly off, long puts bringing up the rear. That's kind of interesting. Again, just went live. I'm sure this is not how the final voting is going to shake out. Get over there at options and make your voice heard. Let's go out to uh, Uncle Mike again. Mr. Uncle Mike, so what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of the week until our Thursday episode, sir. Fed, Fed, and more Fed. Um, the other thing is that uh, uh, the Quantum Leap guy, Sam Beckman, or what the heck's the guy's name from FTX? Beckett, uh, Beckett. Sam, Samuel Beckett. <laughs> I, I like Sam Beckman better from Quantum Leap. Remember that show? That was kind of cool. But anyway, uh, just watch, watching to see if this guy has anything to say or uh, if he does testify or when he does testify, does he say something like, I'm not at liberty to discuss that or whatever the case may be, because uh, uh, this guy really isn't very popular right now. And uh, it's just, I guess, Paul Orndorff's on my mind because the other Mr. Wonderful, the guy from Shark Tank, uh, He's not looking too good right now, saying all those nice things about him uh, a while ago. So just watching that saga along with the Fed. Well, yeah, he did put a lot of money into FTX, and he did try to orchestrate a bailout of it with some sovereign wealth funds towards the end until the regulators said, yeah, no, you can't come in and uh, bail yourself and your other co-investors out with some, with some. I think it was Saudi money, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, this thing is just not going to pass muster. And then those funds backed off. Thankfully, they didn't throw, they didn't throw more good money after bad with Mr. Bankman Freed's little failed venture here. Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on this week? Uh, like I said, quadruple witching. Uh, the CPI and the Fed. And that is, uh, that is it. I was talking with someone last week on one of our shows, and I, I brought up, I think this might be the most Fed-driven market I've ever seen. <laughs> if not, it's very close to it. It's crazy. It's insane. It's, everyone just lives and breathes. I mean, back in the Greenspan days, it was pretty big, too, and everyone was looking at the briefcase and everything. But I don't think we hung on it so much in between announcements like where we are. And every single movement in the major indices these days is all just driven by how does this play back to the Fed at the end of the day. Either way, listeners, this music means... We are done, at least for the old option block here. But don't worry if you need more in your lives. We'll be back in a little bit. While you pro folks hang out there in the live, we'll pump some fun stuff in. We'll be back in a little bit to talk all things crypto rundown with the folks from Mercury Digital Assets. So that should be fun. But before we go, Mr. Meatball, sir, if folks want to reach out to you, see what you got cooking. Where should they go? What should they do? Go to optionpit.com and check us out. We are writing live content, great content every single day. Come check us out. It's not the pits. You just want to go to the pit. The option exactly. is the place to go. And Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, if folks want to get some 
Uncle Mike goodness on, or perhaps give you a righteous hard time for your failure in the wrestling wrestling uh, melange of melodies, sir. Where should they go? What should they do? StCharlesWealth.com. Check out my website. If you're looking for a financial advisor. Um, and also follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T O S A W. There you go. StCharlesWealth.com is the place to go. We got to get on out of here. Back in a little bit for the crypto rundown. All you pro folks will have it live in your ear holes. All you on demand folks be hitting the network later on today. Of course, if you want to join in all the pro fun, the options insider.com slash pro or for your cool cats out there slash secret club. Haven't mentioned that one in a while, but it is up there. And then, of course, back again throughout the rest of the week for all of our fun content till we're back again on Thursday, another episode of the option block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.